In today's episode of the Motorhome Matt podcast. I've been to the Caravan Camping Motorhome Show 2024 at the NEC, where we sought out the latest innovation in vehicles and accessories. And we answer your questions about solar panels with MPPT controllers and also toll road charges for motorhomes. Welcome to the Motorhome Matt podcast. I'm Keith Gooden. And I'm Motorhome Matt. It's industry insights, expert advice for the worlds of motorhomes, caravans and campervans. Brought to you by ThatLeisureShop.com. And remember to follow on your favourite podcast app and subscribe to us on YouTube. Sponsored by ArabaceCreative.co.uk. This week we're turning back the clock to the big show in February. Uh, Matt was busy there, particularly on the advice centre, Matt. Yeah, it was very good. Very good indeed. What's the top topic that you were given? Uh, well, you're going to tell me you can't guess. Mm, toilets. Definitely. Uh, payload. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> Wi-Fi. The, the th- Wi-Fi, of Wi-Fi on the move. How to get good internet where we're away in our motorhome. Yep, absolutely. 100%. The can of worms that is the SIM card. <laughs> and of course, uh, you were there for the week of Valentine's Day. Did you get covered in kisses? I got proposed to six times. Did you really? No. Oh, not even the once. <laughs> not even once. Yeah. And she remembered the Valentine card. It was a she. <laughs> yeah, <okay>. my other <laughs> half. <laughs> I even took a chocolate for her, a little chocolate heart. So you were busy, busy, busy at the show. What did you come away with? New products, new brands and innovation. These are the things that I'm on the hunt for here at the Caravan Camping and Motorhome Show 2024. Join me as we take a walk around the show. Let's see what we can find. I've found a new motorhome brand here at the show. In fact, this is a new motorhome brand new to the UK. Uh, Although established 10 years ago and built in Poland, there are two dealers currently bringing them into Britain, ES Hartley and Blackdown. This is Globe Traveller. And I have to say, it's pretty impressive. So much so, they've actually won two awards at the Campervan Awards. They've won Best Fixed Bed Campervan and Campervan of the Year. So why? Why did we think that they won? Well, the fixed bed above my head is certainly award-winning, it's really innovative, comes out really quickly and really easily and folds away, meaning I can stand up. It leaves behind a very small bed where you could put a child, but the bed's six foot long uh, and wide enough for two adults and will take the weight of two adults. There's also fixed single beds or double in the rear. The finish though inside is beautiful. And one of the highlights of this is the choice. So this to me feels like buying a BMW where you can spec the seats, Uh, The seats I'm sat in, these are a £1,600 option, so you could not have them, but they are super comfy, I have to say. Uh, You can choose the floor material, you can choose the cloth material, you can choose all the wood material, uh, and certainly that's the case on this model. Uh, They're built on the Fiat Ducato, and they're also built on the VW Crafter. We are currently in the Voyager Z, uh, and then outside, Tom, I'm just going to come out of here and step out the steps. We've got the Explorer 2X, which is also built on the Fiat Ducato, but follow me, I've got this big box here on the stand, and inside this box are all the samples. These are all the cloth interior options. I love this gray and orange. They're in grays, creams, beige, standard beige. Uh, You can choose the floor finish, uh, and the, the options you can choose on the Fiat base is massive. The VW Crafter range also has options that you can choose. This is the furniture wood finish for the Onyx range. Uh, They are very, very impressive. And I'd say if you were in the market for a camper van with a fixed bed on a Fiat or a VW, then perhaps Globe Traveller should be something you checked out. I'm here with friend of the podcast, Mr. Richard Olfin from Kabunk. How are you, sir? Good, thank you, Matt. Now, we all know what Kabunk is. It's the genius bunk beds that fit in the front of a van. It's very clever, isn't it? He has a show been for you. Uh, good, thanks. We're here in uh, a Danbury. That's in Camper Van Hall 5. This is where you can see the real uh, interesting vans. They'll have ideas like no gas, 
all lithium battery you know this is where the new ideas are coming from that'll go into the other vans later i would think interesting now you talk to everybody because yeah. you can't stop talking we know this to be true <laughs> what's true. your take on the footfall are you seeing people here for the first time yeah. is it is, is it busy it is busy first yeah. time buyers first time buyers yeah and first time converters which are, i guess is what we're seeing here because this is almost a convert self-conversion hall do you know what i mean it's yeah. one step above that yeah, i mean there's sure. some fantastic vans here matt have you seen the project yonder we're about to go and speak oh, to Grace now. Grace, lovely. I'm here with yet another first-time exhibitor to the show. In fact, this is the first show Project Yonder has ever attended, and I'm here with its founders, the lovely Grace and Charlie. Hi, guys. Hi, Hi. how are you doing? Really well. It's great to see you. Welcome to the show. This thank is an amazing you. bit of kit. Oh, thank you. So t tell us a bit about it. You're both uh, responsible for building it. You're a couple, yeah. uh, and this is your baby. Is this yeah. the second one you've ever put on as a demo? Um, this is sort of really the first one that's actually made it to the full term, I suppose you could call yeah. it. The, um, so this is, as I say, our baby. It's our demo van. We've put our heart and souls into this. We've been working on it for sort of the past year, perfecting it in the background, building it all on 3D CAD so that we can kind of go into production with this particular model. Um, yeah, so we've kind of picked best of breed with this van. Everything that we've got in there is the highest quality we could find and the sort of best integration we could find, um, including obviously the base vehicle, which is a Mercedes Sprinter, which in yeah. our opinion is sort of uh, the best on the market. Now, I was very excited to hear you've actually got stock of Mercedes Sprinters lined up yes, for conversion. we do. So we've been very lucky to wangle ourselves six all-wheel drive vehicles for 2024. Um, so yeah, we've, we've got six lined up and available from um, June June time they start arriving. So um, amazing, sort of a rare opportunity to snap something up in 2024. So they're available to order now. Yes, yeah. uh, all of our vehicles will be built to order, so customers can sort of choose their colours and style it up how they see fit. So Charlie, tell us a bit about the spec. What's different about these? amazing looking vans so these vans are all electric habitation there's no gas on board we've got a huge um, electrical system there's uh, two 24 volt 200 amp hour Victron batteries um, the whole uh, system is Victron so you're using kind of the best you can get and then we've got 300 watts of solar on top so yeah you're gonna be fully charged all the time keeping you off-grid and what do you do about heating in them then so the heating is off the, the diesel we've got a Truma 60e Okay. In it. Can people spec their own battery system, heating system and so on? Do they all have to be gasless? Uh, yeah, so that, that is the route that we're going down, so it's all gasless. Um, but we've built a system so it can cope with you know, an aircon unit, air fryer um, and an induction hob. So ballpark then, because it's the number one question, people are going to look at this and go, wow, how much is that? Um, so the all-wheel drive is starting at 165,000 for your base model, which is uh, quite an extensive base model as yeah. it stands anyway with uh, the fully off-grid electrical system um, as part of that. Yeah, okay. And lead time to get one? Um, so depending when you place your order from the point of the van arriving at the workshop to the van then being delivered to the customer, we're looking at four to eight weeks. Um, okay. So we're booking from June this year. So the first customer could see their van in July, depending on what spec, um, and then incrementally on from there month by month. That's like the shortest lead time in the entire marketplace. You know that? <laughs> Like that. No, no, no. I've got a customer who has bought a brand new motorhome, I won't name the brand, they ordered it in August 22 it's st and it's still no sign oh, of it arriving, really? possibly May, June 24, yeah. but I can see it being two year lead time. So wow. two to four weeks, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah, so maybe we've set the bar a bit high there, but we'll see. <laughs> no, it's Soon good, go for out. it. I was just leaving the Project Yonder stand and I saw this and I asked Charlie a bit more about it. This is amazing, this is a Garmin developed piece of HMI software that controls the entire van and when I say the entire van I mean pretty much everything but drives it you can turn the main lights on the, the spotlights on the front uh, and we're blind exhibitors if we do that you can control all the lighting systems inside remotely with basically an iPad uh, the, the heating and cooling is all controlled on here you can monitor and control the entire lithium setup as well it is really phenomenal Garmin have invested a huge amount of money in this and it's completely branded Project Yonder 
I'm sure we're going to start seeing this in other manufacturers. But if you get a chance to come and see a Project Yonder, come and have a play with this. It's really cool. Now I'm here with a brand that many of you will be familiar with. This is Brit Stops and I'm here with the lovely Tom. Hi Tom. Hey, how you doing? I'm very well. Now your surname is familiar because we all remember your dad, Steve Clark, mm -hmm. who came to hundreds of shows, but there's been a big change. You've been sold, what's happened? Yeah, so last January, my parents sold the business to Harvest Hosts. So they're an American company that do the exact same product as us, but in the States and way bigger than us. Um, and yeah, they offered me a contract to stay on and manage the business here, so it's a good opportunity. So the next generation has taken over the running of Britstops. You are now the UK general manager, congratulations. Thank you. Harvest Host in the US, uh, what changes have they made? There's one big one in particular, tell us Tom. Yeah, so we're no longer doing a book. We're You're gone. no longer doing a book? That's correct, we've gone on a full digital platform, so we have an app and you can also access it on the website too. Um, yeah, it's been really, really good. Um, we've got photos of everywhere, reviews, you can favorite things, you can plan trips and routes, you can filter stuff by different things that the hosts can offer. So yeah, really good functionality. And we've had really good feedback from it at the show as well. It's been nice uh, demoing and talking people through it. Well, we are gonna do a deep dive together into the Brit Stops app. I have to say it's really good. It's really, really easy to use, isn't it? Uh, uh, Tom's gonna to come down to the studio in Bristol uh, and we're gonna unpack the app together. Uh, so stay tuned, that episode is coming in a few Few weeks time and we look forward to welcoming you then yeah look forward to seeing you should be good one last question tom is dad coming to the show he's not no he's at home with my mum they're very much enjoying being retired now anyone who's been following me for any length of time knows that i love my dip robe i'm here on the dip stand at the show it's first time at the show i'm with mark from dip how are you doing yeah good bit warm but yeah all good all good <laughs> i have found a bright orange one on your stand this I is ace it looks something on you i'll say i'll it say it, it's amazing on top of gilet this is pr pretty warm i'm not gonna lie so this is your first time at the show it's great to see you here how's it been yeah, really good. Met some really good people, had some great conversations and sold some product, which always helps, doesn't it? And you've had some Motorhome Matt fans coming on the stand as well, I hear. We have. We've had people coming around saying they've heard of this fella that dresses in all orange. <laughs> well, I'm loving this dip robe. They are amazing. They are so comfy and so practical. And where can people find one after the show online? So online we're on at www.obligatory to say, dip.me, D-D-I-P-P dot me. There you go. I'm loving this orange one. I'm going to head off. Thanks a lot, Mark. Nice to see you. Uh, fine, okay. Pay See you later. Like, Pay when you like. I'm on a stand that I've never seen before at this show. They're called Wolf Outdoors, very smart stand. And with Gary, uh, who is from Wolf. Hi, Gary, welcome Hi. to the show. Thank, thanks for having us. So you're from the angling world, aren't you, really? That's and you kind of stepped yeah. into the motorhome caravan world. What brought you here? Um, we've been trying to come here for a while now. Uh, mostly we're from the out uh, the fishing background but we found that a lot of anglers do camping as well so when we're doing them shows they're saying um i'm buying it for camping uh, so we decided right. we tried to get here for a while now and obviously we can't it's that busy uh, we're lucky enough this year to get in here so we're great to be here you're right there are many companies that wait years to come to yeah. this show so congratulations on getting the space and how's the show been for you really well really really well received uh, people love our products they like to see something new and fresh this has been one of the number one selling product. What is it? Uh, it's a mozzie zapper. It's basically a smaller version of what you see in a restaurant that kills the, the bugs and the, ah. the flies. Very popular product. We sold over probably 90,000 of them this year. Well, Gary, have a great show. It's great to see you. Welcome to our little world. Thank you. Uh, and, uh, we'll see you soon. Yeah, I hope we'll see, see you again. Time. Oh, definitely. We'll definitely see us again. So I'm delighted to be here on the ProTech cover stand, a brand that's been long established in our industry. Many of you will be familiar with it. And I'm here with its new owner, Simon Price. Simon, good morning. Uh, good morning. Nice to meet you. It's very good to meet you. Now, tell us a little bit about this news. You've basically bought ProTech covers from Keith, who has been at the business forever. Yeah, absolutely. And, and sadly, not here with us today, but uh, he's... Uh, pestering us for our text message all day but yeah in November Power Plastics uh, Limited bought ProTech covers uh, from Keith. Keith uh, chose to enter retirement uh, was looking for a buyer and we were partnering with them and uh, it was just a nice marriage and, and a convenient opportunity for us to to expand into a new area. So what attracted you then to this industry and particularly to ProTech? So there's a couple of things I think 
the, the attraction to ProTech was they're a partner of ours for many years. Uh, great expertise in sewing. Keith and Anne had a pedigree in tailoring, moved into to ProTech covers and entered into a very niche market. And their expertise in, in, in that stitching and, and the ability to staff up and, and create quality stitch products is, is unrivaled. We're likely to see ProTech around for a long while yet then? Absolutely, it's going nowhere yet. Yeah, yeah, ProTech will, uh, will be around for a while. Um, like I say, uh, up in Bradford, so good old northern textile business, yeah. and uh, it's great to be manufacturing here in the UK. Well, this is very, very new news, and you heard it here first. So, Simon, I wish you every success with the business. I think it's brilliant that we've got a, a long established brand like ProTech uh, being reinvented, if I can say that. Uh, and Keith, if you're watching, I'm sure you are. We wish you every, uh, all the best, every success in your retirement. Do you reckon you'll turn up this week? He's desperate to. <laughs> yeah, I reckon he will. We'll see if we see you here, Keith. It is really nice, but don't tell anyone I said that, it's Caravan. I'm not Caravan Colin. I'm here on the GN Espace stand with someone we call the Oven Lady. Um, it's Abby. Hello, welcome to the show. Hello, thank you for having this me. This is your first time at the show, isn't it? It is, yes. We're very excited to be here. Yeah. Um, first time that we are actually exhibiting in um, the leisure industry. So tell us a bit about the product you're here with. We, we nicknamed you the oven lady. You are selling ovens and hobs, but what's different about them? Yes, so we sell um, a mix of kitchen appliances. So we have electric ovens, electric hobs, and um, also cookers. And what's really unique about them is that they are fully electric. So right. it's actually the first range of completely electric appliances to, to be available for the leisure industry. This is a way that people, and a means by which people can convert from gas to all electric. These are interchangeable with their gas oven, is that right? Yes, exactly. So um, we have two different sizes. So we have a 45 centimetre and a 50 centimetre, and they are kind of the typical sizes that you see in camper vans and um, other vehicles. And your background is in the marine industry, is that right? Exactly, yes. So we have been um, working in the marine industry for the last 15 years. So that's where we started life. We developed products that were specially designed um, to, to be you know, sturdy and robust for, for yacht. We were getting lots of requests from, from people with camper vans and particularly explorer trucks and people wanting really sturdy off-grid solutions that are going to see them through you know, going, going off-grid off for quite a long period of time. Now tell us a bit about the oven trays. You love talking about this. Tell us more. I do. Um, so one of the really great things about our um, products is that they're all designed around gastronome containers. So these are professional um, equipment. So if you've ever worked in a kitchen or if you've ever been into a professional kitchen, and you'll see these big trays um, and what's really great about them is that they um, they all kind of fit together well and they can fit loads of food in um, so it means that our products are really really efficient in terms of space. What kind of power do they consume because you're going to run these from a lithium battery type setup and an inverter uh, what kind of power consumption do they use? Yeah, so the um, the smaller oven, which is the 45 centimeter one, so that will um, the oven and cook it the combined um, cooker is a 3.9 kilowatts um, the nominal load so that's the absolute maximum that okay. you'll need to run it um, and the larger one we have is 4.8 kilowatts so very Again, viable on lithium load. setup yeah but the reality is that actually you're you're rarely using that much no. power um, and we've really tried to design a product that uses as little energy as as is possible when you are um, you know when when energy is at such a premium Many of you will know I'm a big fan of Solbio, the natural toilet chemical, and a little birdie has told me they've launched a new product. I'm about to venture over to their stand to find out more, but I'm going to exercise a bit of caution because the last time I spoke with John, he made me drink the stuff. I'm delighted to welcome Carlo to the UK, all the way from Belgium. Hello, Matt. Welcome to the show. Now welcome you, to our stand. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now, you own Solbio, but you've got a new product. Yeah. Uh, this is a water tank cleaner. A water tank cleaner and system cleaner. It uh, cleans the tank, uh, avoids uh, buildup of uh, bacteria and uh, uh, biofilm. Uh, it uh, cleans the, the pipes, uh, the boiler, the whole system. You do this once or twice a year uh, to have a clean tank uh, to have uh, preserve your uh, fresh water. 
So um, it is 100% natural. We use uh, hydrogen peroxide. We stabilize it. Uh, we add a little bit of color to it, which is food grade color, which is used also in bakeries to make marzipan, let's say. So is it safe to drink? It, no, it's not safe to drink. Uh, you have to flush uh, it through the system. That's why we have this uh, blue color inside. Okay, a little bit of blue dye. So once uh, it goes down the, the, the tap and the water is clear again, it's safe to drink. I've got it. Now, yeah. I want to ask you about hydrogen peroxide. I happen to know from a few years ago yeah. when we were doing a lot of research into sanitizing a motorhome interior post-COVID yes. uh, yeah. that we were using hydrogen peroxide and it's quite dangerous. Yeah. We had to wear masks. In fact, we yeah. had to wear hazmat suits when yes. we were using it. Yeah. And so yeah. we stopped using it. Yeah, hydrogen peroxide is incredibly unstable. Yes. You just said you stabilize it. Yeah, we stabilize How it. How do you do that? Okay, Matt. Uh, that's uh, Solbio, that's our uh, secret, how we do it. Uh, You're not going to tell, tell me. You, I will tell you once. <laughs> Off mic. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so Off this mic, is. I will tell you. But no, we stabilized it, so it's safe. Uh, it's uh, less than 5% we use, so it's enough to clean thoroughly, hold your system, so it's safe uh, for the environment, it's safe for your health, it's safe uh, for the whole system. But really importantly, you're not using chlorine or silver, no, which no is silver. traditionally what European yeah. fluids like this use, isn't it? Silver yeah. particularly. Yeah, a lot of them use silver, we don't understand it. Well, it's to stabilize it, but uh, silver is a heavy metal, so we are sure it's not good for your health. And chlorine, it leaves, it leaves uh, a taste and a smell behind. And when can we get it in our shop at that leisure shop? Uh, about within three to four weeks, we will have it uh, available. So sometime in March 2024? Yeah, yeah, around that date. There you are, you heard it first. Well, Carlo, thank you so much for talking to us. It's great to meet you at last. Yeah, okay. All the way from thank Belgium, yeah. with an yeah. Italian name. Carlo, yeah, Carlo. Carlo, yeah. love it. Back in October at this show, here at the NEC, I had the privilege of doing a driver training course with this familiar face. This is Fliss, who runs those courses for the Camping Cabinet Club, and here she is in person. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Now, it's lovely to see you. You're up to something very special this year. You're on stage. I am, I am. I have been on stage previously, but this year is completely crazy. So, uh, yesterday... Well, you're being crazy or I the schedule? I feel it, I feel it. So yesterday, today and tomorrow, I'm here on the Advice Centre and I'm talking about towing. Yep. Um, and then at the weekend, I'm on the Camping and Caravanning Club stand talking about how to choose a motorhome oh, wow, um, okay. and things to think about when choosing a motorhome. I have watched your podcast for a few, bit of inspiration. <laughs> um, and so I'm doing that. So. And in around all of that, I'm outside doing the towing experiences that you did back in October. So I'm coming running in, and it's like a Superman impression because it's one shirt off, the another shirt on, on stage, quick change back, back outside. Um, I haven't had time to go to the loo, eat, drink, nothing. It's been mental. So if you see a crazy lady at the show <laughs> stripping running. anywhere <laughs> and running around, yeah, it'll be Fliss. And it's great to see you though on stage oh, thank you. because it is a bit of a white male dominated thing so to have a young female can i call you that on no, yeah. stage when i'm going to say young yeah. <laughs> easy steady <laughs> but it's brilliant though you've got all this knowledge about towing about driving a motorhome driving a car towing a caravan and the fact you can share it with people i think it's amazing oh, so I, yeah my help to the organizer for asking you to do it yes i did put a little word in i um, had heard thank you yeah, thank think, you but it's great i think it's really good i think it's far more representative of us as a community of people i think so i think so because we've got some great women in the industry you know we have got cat from wandering birds um and she has got a lot of knowledge but here from what i'm seeing she's being used to talk about her experiences and the things she does as a solo female traveler which is wonderful um, but when it comes to the technical side mm. i haven't seen many so it's lovely to see be asked and be involved in being on that technical side now we also have some very exciting news of an exciting partnership together. We do. Yeah, tell us more. So, me and you are going to partner, and I'm going to partner with that leisure shop, um, and I have got my own shop front on your website, thank you very much. Um, and on there, I've listed all the essential kit that I recommend when I'm teaching people with caravans and motorhomes to help get them started. Um, so there's some kit on there which people can go and see. Also, they've got access to your wider shop, 
Um, and if they use uh, my link and use the code the trailer lady, they'll get 10% off their first order, which That's is it. absolutely brilliant. So we're here on the Bow Camp Crespo stand, and we're going to surprise the team from that leisure shop. But not just any member of the team, I'm hoping to get Mrs. Motorhome Matt on mic. Follow me. What do you think of the light? It's very nice, yeah. We're just, we're just seeing whether it will suit her current. Is yeah. she being helpful? Yeah, she's very helpful. Yeah, yeah. Well, we just met her, but yeah, she's very good so far. You've only just met her? Yeah, yeah, we just met her. Well, you're luckier you. than me. I know, yeah. We're impressed so we're far. We're so You all right? You having a good day? I'm fine, thank you, yes. Very helpful. <laughs> See you later. I'm with a brand that many of you will be familiar with. It's the Alan Rogers stand. Alan, good morning. Morning, Matt. How are you? Are you I'm very well. Feeling all right after last night? It was a big night, wasn't it? It was your awards. It was, yeah. It was the Alan Rogers and Caravan Motorhome Club European Campsite of the Year Awards for 2023. We're never going to say that again, all right? No, that's, that's right. We'll never mention that. <laughs> the snappiest before. award title in the world. Absolutely, yeah. Now, last night there was an overall winner and we wanted to just give them a little expose. Who won? Yep, so it was Castel Campin La Biennesis, which is in the Pas de Calais region of France. And a beautiful campsite it is too. Congratulations to them. Absolutely. I'm not going to try and repeat their name. Uh, <laughs> uh, and why did they win? So they got the overall award from Alan Rogers. Um, it's a beautiful campsite, lovely region. Um, they've got two pools. So one of those is those typical French pools, you know, the ones with the sliding roofs that go over the top so you can use it all season long. Yep. Uh, they do three sort of pitch sizes. The, the largest, the prestige pitch, is 200 meters square and it's got a barbecue on there, a picnic table, a fridge on the pitch as well. 200 meters, so, yeah, that's massive. Yeah, huge pitches uh, yeah. for France, yeah, massive. And in the region, what else is there to do? Oh, loads to do. So it's not just good for overnight stops. As obviously, Pas de Calais is really close to the UK, but you can also visit Boulogne, which has got Europe's uh, largest aquarium. Uh, walking and cycling in that region is amazing and you can hire bikes on the site uh, if you wanted to stay on the site and you look I'm, I know you love your food yeah uh, La Ferme Gourmand which is the on-site restaurant absolutely amazing f produce great food and and very reasonably priced as well brilliant and when is the site open so it opens at the start of April and runs through till the end of September and the big question we all know for such an amazing site how much is it so it's sort of a mid-range site, so £33 per, per person per night in the low season. Right. And then obviously that goes up in the, uh, in the, high, in the season. high season. Just tell us the name of the site again. It's Le Castel Camping La Biennesis. I love hearing you say that, Alan. You know I'm not Alan, don't you? You know my name's Rob. How many years have we known each other? He's funny, isn't he? To us, you're always Alan. Yeah, thanks a lot. Now, man. if you want to find out more about all of Alan Rogers' great campsites, you can do so at mhmp.info forward slash Alan Rogers. Alan, I've got a great idea. Why don't we make this a monthly feature, the Alan Rogers Campsite of the Month? What do you think? Yeah, yeah, that'll work. We could do that. I'm here with the lovely John Gooch from Life Beyond Bricks fame. How are you, John? Oh, I'm very good, thank you. Well, you're spending the week working for us at that leisure shop, which we love. It's great having you on the Maypole stand. Uh, and uh, it's been great having you as part of our team this week and Tash as well, your lovely yes, wife. Yes. But John, I've got one question for you. Anyone who follows our shop at That Leisure Shop on Instagram will know that regularly Maddie asks us in the team a stupid question and we have to try and answer it. And Maddie's given me one to ask you. Oh God. There's a zombie apocalypse and you're only allowed to choose up to two items that you think could save you from this stand. Off you go. Uh, it would be the tyre inflator and power pack. Cause go on, let's go and get it. Where is it? Where is it? The tyre inflator and power pack. Yeah. Oh yeah, we love this. Why would you choose this? Well, if your vehicle battery's gone flat because the zombies have been chewing on the cables, then you could you could get it started with this. And also, if they've been chewing the tyres, you could. Well, obviously, you're probably not going to struggle getting air in, but at least you might be able to fix a puncture or something like that. Perhaps you could clip those on their ears or something. Yeah, you could do. Or you could hit them over the head with that. That's a, oh, that's a good show. Uh, second yeah, item, you're allowed to. Second item. For the nights, you would really want a light like this. John, it's almost like you're prepared for this. I, oh. I always think about this, you see. You can stick this to the bottom of your car, just in case your lights are smashed in the zombie apocalypse. Yeah. 
Very good answer. Maddie would be proud. She's smiling off camera. Thanks, buddy. These are really bright, aren't they? They are proper bright. <laughs> Thanks, John. It's great to see you. Have a great rest of the show. Thank you. <laughs> Look out for zombies. Now, I'm in an aisle, quietly minding my own business, nearly been run over by the lovely Joe, Joe Walner. I can't get your name right. I'm sorry, Joe. How are you? I'm doing fine, thanks, Matt. Now, Joe is a regular listener to the podcast, and we see you at lots of the Warner shows as well. We do indeed. How has it been for you, the show, particularly given you're in this amazing wheelchair of yours? Well, it's very different coming to the February show to coming to the October show, simply because I had no idea I'd spend more time going up and down a ramp yeah. than actually getting from one level to the other. So the reality is these halls between one and two and four and five is all steps, isn't it? Or a big it ramp. Is. It is. Luckily, we managed to find a lift which cut down how much battery I was using, but that was, yeah... So these halls were built back, I think, back in the 60s, before there was any real consideration yeah. and understanding of well, we people with limited mobility. In, um, we don't get this in October. For some reason, in October, I float from floor to floor. It's all flat. It is. Yeah, so, so much newer halls. We ha is it because it's just smaller, or is it because it's... The October show is much bigger, but the halls are much newer, so where there was I a consideration. We them in February. What, in those halls? Yeah. You'd have to speak to the NEC. I will be. See, see what the occupancy is in those halls for this show. Because but what about the show itself, Joe? How's it oh, been for no, you? No, the show itself's been good. Now, you had your motorhome adapted for you by Coachbuilt GB. Yeah, it was already done most of it by Coachbuilt for another chap because it was second hand. And I have to say, Coachbuilt are amazing with what they do, fantastic with customer service, and I absolutely love everything they've done for us because it's life changing. Yeah. We can go and stay with family who we couldn't stay with before because there was nowhere for me to get in and out safely because their houses were too small or the doorways weren't big enough. This, this literally is a lifesaver. And this chair is no barrier for you, is it, in no. getting away in your motorhome? No, not at all. Got a cassette lift. She goes, there's plenty of room in it. They made sure for the previous owner that there was plenty of room. And yeah, I have no trouble with it in at all. Enjoy you, the rest of the show, won't I you? I will do. And you, carry on doing what you do best. What's that then? Well, answering people's questions. Being and cheeky. Also, you and Keith making us laugh. Well, we do try. Oh, oh no, sorry, Chris. Chris, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you did listen to that I one. I have well done. never laughed so much in all my life at some of your shows. I must be honest. I'm so, glad yeah, you enjoy I look forward to it. I really do. All right, well, you take care I will and be. stop trying to run people over. I didn't. I crept up behind you and I said, excuse me, young man. That must have been what threw you. Excuse me, young man. I love it. I was for more of that. <laughs> Hello, Sue. What's your name? Peter. Hello, Peter. Where are you from? Uh, Cardiff. From Cardiff? Oh, we're in oh. Bristol. We're not far oh, from right, you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, now, I understand you don't listen or watch the podcast, is that right? No. Nope. And do no. you own a motel or caravan? Nope. And why are you here? Because I'm here, my mother-in-law, my father-in-law, and uh, but I'm having a good look round, and it's something that I've enjoyed it actually. Fair dues. Yeah, you, I'm not really into it, but I'm enjoying it. You're not really into it, but you enjoy yeah. it. So, can we persuade you to get a motel or camper van? Do you think? <laughs> if earning doors guess I don't wait yet. I will be, but uh, she, yeah, she, she's keen. Oh yeah, yeah. And what's her indoors name? Karen. Karen, come on, Karen. We need to persuade you. You're going to get a camper van and motel. Is that all right? You got his credit card. Crack on. Now your friend does listen to the podcast. Oh yeah. Is this Andy Tony? Andy. Andy. Andy King. Andy King. A big shout out to you, oh, Andy. Oh, yeah. He'd be absolutely over the moon over this. Brilliant. Sorry, matey, but get did you, huh? <laughs> well, <laughs> we're going to see if we, I'm going to see if we see you at another show. Yeah. And if yeah. you do buy a motorhome or caravan, mm -hmm. let us know. We will. Meanwhile, go and check out the Motorhome Map podcast. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Nice to see you. Thanks a lot. I'm here with the lovely James Riley of Motorhome Happiness fame. You're famous on Facebook, you are. Yes, I'm trying. Well, not really, but I'm just trying to put a good name out there. Yeah, well, fair play. You're here at the show, waving the flag for the group. Yeah. It's a really active group. It's one of the friendliest groups on Facebook, isn't it? Uh, yes, well, thank you for that. Yes, we are. We are a very positive, non-negative group. Always happy, always giving advice when needed. Yeah, and what do you think of the show, James? It's amazing. It's, it's my proper first time here. I love it. It's just, everyone's just so friendly. I've seen some amazing people, I've met amazing people in the dealerships. It's all great, yeah, it's really good. And are you here to buy a motel? Well... Is Tilly getting binned off, are you going to get a new one? Oh, that's, now that's a question and a half, but if that chance ever come across in the near future, 
probably yes but at the minute no we'll, we'll keep it now we've, we've just celebrated five years as owners well with Tilly so at the moment no we, we, we love her too much yeah brilliant well have a great show it's lovely to see you and uh, well done on everything you're doing brilliant thank you very much mate all the best I'm here with a face that many of you won't know but you'll certainly recognize his content as it were. This is the deputy editor of Practical Motorhome magazine, Paul Critcher. How are you, Paul? Yeah, I'm not too bad. We've got some news. I've got a column in your magazine, which is amazing. I'm so chuffed. Yeah, we're delighted to have you on board. No, it's it's going to be great. It's, it's going to be, be really fun. good. It's going to be really good. The first article's done. We're not going to reveal what it's about, but it's one you will want to read if you visit campsites. Enough of a clue. Uh, Paul, tell me, why on earth did you choose to work with the Motorhome Map podcast? Why on earth indeed, yeah. Uh, <laughs> at the risk of giving you a big head, I, I think it's um, you bring a lot of experience, um, lots of opinion, and um, obviously you, you've interviewed so many people. So I, I, th- I think there's, there's a whole breadth of experience there that's going to really tap into our market well. Well, that's, that's very kind of you. It's an honour for me. I'm so excited about it. I feel like I'm the Jeremy Clarkson of the motorhome caravan industry now with my own column. Uh, really chuffed. No, and, and I thought it was really charming the way that you, you, you said it was like an exam, sending it in for the first time, but you absolutely nailed it. But we won't reveal what's, what's inside, but I, I hope that people read it and enjoy it. Yeah, the first piece. Honestly, I was really nervous, but mm. I got a big blue tick, so we're on our way. Smashed it. Yeah, looking forward to it. Thanks, Thanks. Paul. Thanks. Well, I came to this show with a hope of discovering some innovation and some new product, and I wasn't disappointed. I've been really encouraged to see companies that have been long established in our marketplace being bought by brands from outside of this industry, and also seeing exhibitors here for the first time, particularly those from related industries like the marine world and the angling world. I think that's really encouraging. I think that's a sign that we are an industry that other businesses have got their eyes on. It's also been really exciting to meet you our listeners and our viewers and people here at this show for the first time. We're still a business that's in growth and we're still a business that's booming and I find that really exciting. For ourselves at the Motorhome Map podcast, we've seen record numbers in our own listenership over the last few months. So thank you and thank you if you came to speak to me throughout the show and thank you if you're an exhibitor here and you took time out to let us bother you and get an interview with you too. Also special thanks to Andrew Dickens and the Camping and Caravaning Club for letting me join Andrew on stage for a bit of a cooking session where we talked about men's health and some of the challenges that both of us as 50-something year old men have been facing. I think it's a topic we'll continue to discuss as we go through into the next year. Anyway, I look forward to seeing you at a future show and on a future podcast. Meanwhile, it's back to the studio. It's the Motorhome Map Podcast, brought to you with ThatLeisureShop.com. I'm Keith Gooden. And I'm Motorhome Matt. And it's time for our Q&A, the questions and answers. You ask the questions, and Motorhome Matt, he tell you the answers. Well, I try. Jim Lewis is the first with a question. I have a Renogy 40 amp MPPT with 300 watt solar panels on the roof. If my 2x110 amp gel batteries are full, I understand the controller will shut off but the panels will still be producing volts. Does this cause the MPPT to heat up? Renogy MPPT does not have a visible heat sink like others have. Ooh, good question. Yeah, very good question, Jim. Um, it will get warm, yes. Um, I would definitely keep an eye on it, uh, but I imagine it should be fine because what's going to happen is you're, if you put a meter across the batteries, you're going to see that whilst they're charging, they're receiving 14.4 volts. That's what the MPPT does. It regulates the voltage down from around 40 volts at the solar panel, uh, down to 14.4, and then once they're charged, the voltage will drop to 13.5 volts, which is called the floating or maintenance voltage. Uh, so I would get a meter on it, and when they're at 13.5, see how warm the MPPT is getting. It is storing that electricity, that kind of oversupply, into its own capacitors, ready for when the batteries drop, and then it will keep charging them, even when the sun's gone down, um, which is the purpose of an MPPT. But you're absolutely right to fit one. 
really important that any solar install has an MPPT controller because it regulates the voltage and helps keep your batteries safe and fully charged. And do be careful when you're sticking your hands into anything electrical. Make sure you're safe and you know what you're doing. Well, I'm not suggesting he sticks his hands in anything. Well, well I just, just thought, thought I'd better say. Just <laughs> nicely stroke the MPPT and see if it's getting warm. But uh, <laughs> Renergy are a respectable manufacturer. Um, so most do have some kind of heat sink on them. So, yeah, just keep an eye on it. See how hot it's getting. David Boeth has been in touch. I hope I pronounced that right, David. David Boeth. Um, doesn't say where you are. Please, if you give us a question, say where you are. It really does help us put the pin on the map. We had one from New Zealand a few weeks ago. Didn't we, we did, I know. Yeah. David says, when travelling on toll roads in a motorhome, what are the size limits before charges increase regarding length, height and weight? Very good question. So, toll booth charges, this is in France. And this might be different in other countries. I've not huge amounts of experience of travelling massively outside of France. Been through Germany, Belgium, Luxembourg. But certainly in France, a Category 2 charge is anything under 3 metres and 3.5 tonnes, which is a low-profile, smaller motorhome. Category 3 is for a motorhome or any vehicle over 3 metres tall, so this is the height, and over 3.5 tonnes, provided it only has four wheels. So it's a two-axle Motone. If you've got a third axle, so you're what known as a tag axle, and you're over three metres tall, and you're over three and a half tonnes, which you would be, you are a category four, and the prices go up the higher the category you are. So that's it. Have you worked out your axle roads? Axle roads? Did you get that? Boom, boom. Axle, axle roads. Rose. Axle, axle roads. It's a joke. It's a pun. Hilarious. Oh, there you go. Have you worked out your axle roads then, David? And let's just repeat that. Category two, under three metres, three and a half tonnes. Category three, over three metres and over three and a half tonnes, but with two axles. And the category four is over three metres and over three and a half tonnes, but with three axles. Count them in France, and de toi. <laughs> That's as good as your French get. <laughs> it is indeed. Ho, he, ho. There it is. Ho, 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 ho. Yeah, how do you ask Matt? How do you get those questions in then? Please do. We'd love it if you did. MHMP.info forward slash ask Matt. Fill out the form like Jim and David have done or record it. Hit the orange button. We love getting your voice on the podcast. And please, as Keith says, tell us where you are. And you can subscribe on YouTube as well, can't you, Matt? You can do. Just hit the little bell and the subscribe button, which is sponsored by arabasecreative.co.uk. Axel Rose, you get it? Axel Rose? I get it now. Y- y- we need the guitarist in Guns N' Roses. Yes, yes. See? <laughs>